welcome everyone to chapter 15 the final episode of season one we're here we made it i feel like we've accomplished a ton and you guys get to see how it all ends in this video now in addition to desert treasure 2 the last remaining quest that we have left before we can don the quest cape on um, if you remember to the prologue and this screenshot of our season one goals you, you will notice that some things are already checked off and that's because we've accomplished them over the, the course of the last 14 chapters well this video will focus on making sure that all the things that are not checked off are going to get accomplished uh, before we close this season out now there is one thing that i have to fuss up to i made a mistake and i omitted footage of us getting the prospector's outfit which should have went in chapter 13 right after we got 72 mining and before we did the clan drop party is where i stayed in the mother load mine and kept grinding enough golden nuggets for us to get the full prospector's outfit i do apologize for making that mistake and not putting it in that video but instead of going back and re-editing chapter 13 which at this point is sitting uh, nicely for release and messing it up i decided to just include the footage to start this video off so apologies again so with that said, chapter 15 proper starts with us training our thieving to level 75 in order to be able to accomplish a few hard achievements at that level. We switch from pyramid plunder to the much faster but much more annoying method of blackjacking menified thugs and Polinovich. And then we were two levels away from getting our fishing to 70, which is also a requirement for the Kandaran hard achievement. Uh, so we went off to the barbarian outpost and fished there until we got to level 70 fishing the next skilling item was for us to get to 75 smithing uh, we needed that for one of the wildly hard achievements so we went to the blast furnace and this time properly with the stamina potion trained here until we got to level 75 um, and then we went to the fremnik region and completed that last thieving achievement we still had to do the 15k experience lamp we got from completing all the Fremnik heart achievements, we put towards runecrafting and got to level 62. Um, and then we went ahead into the wilderness uh, and spent half a day there completing all the heart achievements to, incl to include all the fights and all the little things, uh, dodging and weaving and bobbing, uh, all the pikers in there. But we got it done. The 15k experience lamp we put towards runecrafting but got no level. And then our focus shifted to Slayer. Now, in this episode, we've completed 30 Slayer assignments, and there was no way I was going to be able to fit all 30 of them into one slide. So instead, I split it up into two parts, with the first part being this batch of seven assignments that we completed shortly after the Blast Furnace training you've just seen. Of note, the 122 Blue Dragon assignment, we actually started it off by killing Vorkath 68 times. Now, it was not an efficient way for us to train Slayer. It took us like six minutes per kill. And I guess uh, this assignment is very good money uh, if you don't die a lot, but we did. Uh, I, I guess if we were able to kill him like two to three minutes, if we were higher level, and then, you know, kill him four or five times within a single inventory, I think it would be an efficient way to complete the entire Blue Dragon assignment. But we're just too low of our level. So after 68 kills, I was like, just get me out of here. <laughs> Let me finish this task. I'm going to go kill normal blue dragons until we're done. Anyway, uh, this batch of seven assignments gave us 79 ranged, 78 hit points, 76 strength, 74 attack, 77 magic, and most importantly, 73 slayer. In between the seven slayer assignments, we did get a few things accomplished. The first was we got our fletching to level 65 by fletching mithril darts at the grand exchange it's a very quick method unfortunately it's costly and there's no return on investment whatsoever uh, and then we completed our weeklies starting off with the um, kingdom of miscellanea uh, we did get 650k in profit um, after we sold all the stuff that we got for the week and then we went to Tears of Gothics and got 12k experience in runecrafting. Unfortunately, no level. We're just on the cusp of getting level 63. The last level requirement before we could start Desert Treasure 2 was for us to get to 75 fire making. So off I went to the Winter Todd minigame and spent pretty much my entire day here until we finally got to level 75 
fire making. Uh, by extension, we also got another fletching level to 66. Um, the next day, I didn't quite feel like starting Desert Treasure 2 yet, uh, but I did want to get into some God Wars bossing. Uh, start off with General Grador, something easy. So I convinced Storm to hop on with me. Uh, and we went ahead and uh, slayed 18 General Grados before we got our Bandos chest plate. It was hype as hell. Um, here, I'll let you guys listen for yourselves. Of course, I'm paying for it now by not hitting anything. I saw that I was I was looking down easy 60 mil thank you very much I'll take that cha-ching um we actually stayed killing General Grador uh until 32 kills total I got eight Torm had 24 um but if you look at this table from the OSRS wiki the drop rate for the Bandos chest plate is one in 381 well we got one in 32 kills so I considered that incredibly lucky and a big win for us um, in Season 2, you guys are definitely going to see us come back here in the God Wars dungeon fighting uh, General Grador and all the other generals um, uh, to try to get another lucky drop, and we'll see how that goes. Alright folks, here we are, Desert Treasure 2, the Grandmaster quest, the daddy of all quests, singularly the most difficult quest there is in Old School RuneScape, I don't think there's any debating that. And this quest took us two and a half days. Um, I was I was searching for a word to describe this quest and the only one that I could arrive on was epic and I know I've used that word to describe uh, quests in previous chapters but scratch that reset desert treasure 2 is the definition of epic um, hats off to the person that designed that quest you outdid yourself um, the quest is just phenomenal it's a careful balance of incredible storytelling um, engaging interaction with the environment, uh, challenging fights, um, lore, especially to uh, the age in RuneScape that people don't really um, get to hear about often. Uh, and you know I'm a lore junkie, so I'm very, I was very excited about that. Um, it took us two and a half days, uh, the quest did, um, and there was a false sense of security because I got through um, Vardorvis, I got through the Leviathan and Duke Succulus in the first day, um, all within two or three attempts. And uh, after Duke Succulus, I was like, okay, I think I can do this quest. We, we can get this done, actually. Um, and then I unfortunately ran into a brick wall that was the Whisperer. I'm not entirely sure why the Whisperer took me 24 times, 24 tries to kill her. Um, the last phase, the intensity of the prayer switches, the damage, the short, you gotta kill her before she kills you type um, uh, mechanic in the game. For whatever reason, I was really struggling with that. And uh, I spent essentially a day and a half in uh, in the ruins of Kamdozal trying to kill the Whisperer we finally, before we finally were able to kill her. Um, out of all the fights, I felt that Duke Succulus was the most underwhelming. Not bad, just the most underwhelming. Everything else was incredibly uh, challenging and fun. Um, to include the last uh, the last fight, the four ghosts or four versions of Sliske or whatever, um, at the end, that was super fun. That took us about, I think that took us, we killed it on try number 12, and it was an absolutely flawless run, which you guys are going to see here in a second. Uh, but overall, I have nothing but positive reviews for this quest. Again, it's an absolute epic quest. Um, I'm not sure it's my favorite quest. I still think the, that goes to Sins of the Father and the entire Vampire Saga. Um, but there's no denying that Desert Treasure 2 is definitely in the top five. Anyway, here is the, uh, the final fight.
absolutely clean i would say we only have to use three pieces of uh, mana rays uh, as well as one restore potion to get that kill really really hype um now the quest gave us three experience lamps of 100k each so 300k total experience that we put towards prayer um, that got us to level 73 prayer but most importantly we got to don the quest cape on it was the final quest so immediately after i ran straight to draenor and got my hands on the quest cape and put that bad boy on um kind of for reference uh, we started this whole series on july 30th and the first quest waterfall quest was done on july 30th um the last quest desert treasure 2 was completed on october 22nd which equaled out to 84 days total between the first quest and then the last quest. So I would say not too shabby to complete that many quests in 84 days. Not bad, not bad. To wind down from all the excitement of two and a half days of Desert Treasure 2, I decided to grind out the rest of the prayer uh, experience that I needed to get to 74 prayer. Um, and that gave us the rigor prayer. Of course, we don't have the money for the dexterous scroll yet. Eventually, that's going to happen. Uh, but we went to a gilded altar at a player owned house uh, and sacrificed dragon bones until we got to level 74. And then we popped in the movie and crafted diamond bracelets until we got to level 75 crafting, a requirement for us to be able to craft magic birdhouses. Unfortunately, we do not have the hunter level that's needed. Um, for magic birdhouses so we're gonna have to leave that for season two uh, but at least the crafting portion is done and then we switched to fletching to finish that up and get that to level 70 this was the second to last skill other than rune crafting that was still below 70 so it was a good thing that we knocked that out um, also it was a requirement for us the last requirement to complete a hard achievement in Kandarin. and once we got that done we got the 15k experience lamp for completing all the hard achievements in the Kandaren region that we put towards runecrafting, but did not get any levels. I then redirected my efforts to finish out the Bones to Peaches grind at the Mage Training Arena. Um, in the previous episode, we completed two of the four tasks. It was time to complete the other two and finish the Longbridge hard achievements. So we started in the alchemy room and um, stayed here until we got the 300 pizzazz points necessary uh, in order for us to be able to get bones to peaches. Uh, after that was complete, we switched over to the enchantment room. This one was very simple and very quick. We knocked that out in about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and once we got 200 pizzazz points, we were finally able to get the bones to peaches um, spell that we immediately used. We returned to Lumbridge, grabbed our 15k lamp for completing all the Lumbridge hard achievements and put that towards runecrafting but got no level bumps. And then we completed the next batch of weeklies starting with the Kingdom of Miscellanea. The hole that we received for this week also equaled out to 650 around K of uh, pure profit. Um, and then we went to Tears of Gothics minigame, finished that up and got enough experience that got us to level 64 runecrafting. And then, regrettably, I took a four-month hiatus from RuneScape and gaming in general. At the end of October, I had my cubital tunnel syndrome, my carpal tunnel syndrome surgery, a decompression surgery at the elbow and the wrist. The recovery period is 6 to 12 months, but the first three months were definitely rough. And honestly, uh, I kind of lost interest in video games and was mentally not there because... Uh, I mean, it sucks at age of 32 to not be able to use your left arm, you know? So I kind of just gave up on RuneScape. Unfortunately, I was not able to complete all my season one goals. We still had three hard achievements to complete in three regions. Uh, we were not 100 combat level. Um, there were still some easy combat achievements that needed to be done. So I definitely felt like I left stuff out on the table. Now we did use a lot of that time between October and February to edit pretty much all the chapters. But when I got to chapter 14 and finished that bad boy, I realized, holy crap, we, we are one episode away from this series launching. I should probably get back into RuneScape and finish all those things. So that's what we did. 
Our glorious return to RuneScape started off with an absolute bang. I forgot to hit a record button on my OBS and missed out on three Steve assignments that I cannot accurately remember for sure what they were. I'm pretty sure one of them was a fire giant, the other one was a hellhound. I cannot remember what the third assignment was, but they did equal 49.4k of experience. I had to do some calculator math to figure that out. But the remainder 20 assignments to include the 147 fire giants, which was one, which was our 100th task, um, and then the 135 Torots, which was the 107th task and the final Slayer assignment task for this season. Um, we ended up getting a total of 554.3k of experience across the 30 assignments in this episode. And then on the right hand side, uh, we ended up getting 80 ranged, 77 defense, 81 hit points, 77 attack, 79 strength, and most importantly, 77 slayer. Now, the most important thing to note on this screen is that we used melee in every single one of these assignments. And the whole purpose of it was to grind out a defense, attack, strength, and hit points as quickly as possible to get to 100 combat level, which was one of our season one goals. So I got level 99 combat and 100 combat by actually training a prayer at a gilded altar, sacrificing dragon bones. Uh, but it would be a little messy trying to show that. So instead, I show you guys all the Slayer assignments first. And then here is uh, here is us getting to level 80 prayer, which also got us to level 100 combat, a season one goal, but also very importantly, a requirement for two hard achievements. The first of which was to get a Slayer level from Durad or Slayer Simon, excuse me, from Duradel. That completed all the hard achievements in the Karamja jungle. The 10K experience lamp we got, we put towards runecrafting. It got us to level 65. And then we completed a veteran game of pest control to finish all the hard achievements in the Western provinces. The 15K experience lamp there, we again put towards runecrafting, but this time got no level. Um, and then 65 runecrafting was a requirement for the already hard achievement to craft some death runes. We went ahead and did that and then returned to Artie to turn in the last hard achievement, receive our 15k experience lamp that we put towards room crafting, got no level. And here is a scroll through all the achievement progress. You will notice that all the easy, medium, and hard achievements are greened up and complete. With just two goals left, the first one we tackled was getting all the easy combat achievements done. We still had Tempros to do, which has eight combat achievements, four in the easy tier, and then two respectively in the medium and the hard tiers. I actually really enjoyed this uh, activity. I can't really call it a boss fight, but I guess it is. I specifically liked the Y Cook hard achievement, the precise use of boss mechanics and timing in order to get 10 permits. That was a ton of fun to figure out. Uh, thanks, uh, YouTube creators, for helping me with that one. And then the last combat easy combat achievement we needed to do was to kill a lizardman without lizardman shaman excuse me without taking any damage so we knocked that out and here is us uh, with all the complete easy achievements now i know it says uh, that we are missing two that is easy achievements for scariest the rat king which was added after i set my season one goals and to be honest with you i just wanted to see this thing through to the end I will leave Scurrius, the Rat King, and all the other wonderful additions to easy combat achievements and the game. Uh, I saw that there's some new quests and other things that were added during my hiatus. I'll leave all that for Season 2. And then to complete the last remaining goal for Season 1, to get every single skill above 70, I went to the Guardians of the Rift minigame to get 5 runecrafting levels from 65 to 70, and I gotta tell you. This is arguably the absolute worst skilling grind that I have done in all of Old School RuneScape since I started this series all the way in chapter one. It was awful. It took me two and a half days. I just do not have the patience to be training runecrafting um, for more than an hour or two hours a day. It was awful. It was so rough. I was so ecstatic when it was done. And here we are, folks, at the end of chapter 15 and season one. Now, in this episode, we completed 13 farm runs uh, for two farming levels that got us to level 90. 
and also 13 birdhouse runs that got us one hunter level uh, to 73. And here is the final progress check for season one. Um, at, in the end, we ended up at 1733 total skills, which honestly is a tremendous accomplishment. I felt like it was a total roller coaster of emotions. Some skills I absolutely loved uh, to train and some were awful and horrendous. So regardless, I feel like we can be proud of our accomplishments and uh, at the end of the day, hang our hat and just be just be happy. Um, here again are the season one goals. This time you can see that every single thing that we set out to accomplish uh, back in July of 2023 is now checked off. So we can again be proud of that. Something interesting um, I felt that I wanted to share with you guys. I calculated the exact amount of days that we played RuneScape. Now, whether we played for an hour or we played for 15 hours, it didn't matter. But the specific number of days that we played RuneScape to uh, get from chapter one to chapter 15 is ironically 99. Like, if you ever needed <laughs> further evidence that we might be living in the Matrix or some sort of a simulation, there it is. The irony of playing 99 days of RuneScape. Uh, for season one is uh, actually pretty hilarious. Um, as far as teaser for season two, um, I'm currently not playing RuneScape right now and I got to get in the mood to grind it uh, to be able to get into it the same way I did for season one. Whenever that happens, um, some of the pre preliminary goals that I have, which will act like as a teaser for you guys, is I definitely want to get at least one skill to 99. What skill that is, I don't know, but you guys can definitely expect we're going to be grinding that to in Season 2. Um, there's too many quests I still need to finish. One, Into the Tombs. Um, so we're going to accomplish that with Thorm in Season 2. Uh, and then uh, we are going to go back to the God Wars dungeon to get the other three pieces of the frozen key to get into Nexus room uh, and complete that mini quest. Um, there's definitely all the medium and hard combat achievements and the elite um, achievements around the world of RuneScape. So there's a lot of content for us to get after in season two, whenever that happens. Uh, but from the bottom of my heart, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this season one. Uh, I didn't know whether this series is going to be something that I want to do, uh, whether I have one viewer, 10 viewers or many viewers, it did not matter. I really appreciate all those that watched, liked and commented and shared this journey with me. Thank you guys so much. And I hope to see all of you guys in season two. And this is my final bye bye. Have a good one, guys.